Turf TV are with Ian Howard, Managing Director of Denison Sizes. Ian, thank you for your time. I know you're a very busy man. Um, perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about your career before Denison Sizes and how you ended up here. Hi Martin, welcome to Denison Sizes. Thank you. Um, I joined the business back in 1985. Before that I worked in the mining industry, having done a degree in mining engineering. Um, so I joined the family business it was in 1985 and that was just four years after we'd acquired Dennis as a pretty well run out company. Mining industry to turf care industry, quite a different set of parameters there. Did you find the transition easy? There are lots of common skills between mining engineering and conventional engineering manufacturing stuff. Lots of skills I had to learn as well, marketing being a, a major one of them as obviously I've never been involved in that side before. But it stood me in good stead and uh, it was all about working as a team which is very much my philosophy uh, all the way through to today. You've been involved now in obviously getting on for 30 years with this particular company. A lot of changes through those times I'm sure. How has your business and your role changed through those 30 years? It's changed beyond recognition. Uh, when I first joined uh, I, I started looking at new products and how we were going to service existing customers and at that stage the turnover for Dennis uh, was only £40,000 of the spare parts a year. Today we sit here as a £5.5 million turnover business. And during that time there's had to be enormous changes in how uh, we approach the business and, and how we look after customers and so forth. So massive, massive changes. One of the biggest changes to the business is the acquisition of Sysis getting on for four years ago. How did that pan out and how did that uh, actually manifest itself? Did it go as smoothly as you'd hoped? Oh, well, we've been looking at Sysis since uh, 2005. We were first uh, made aware that they potentially might be coming up for sale. It was a massive change for us because it was such a big organisation compared to ours. They were about 25-30% bigger than we were. Um, so it was almost a reverse um, takeover or, or merger, however you want to put it. Um, lots of opportunities there. We'd seen these opportunities for a long time with a lot of uh, common customers. Uh, bowls, cricket, tennis, football, golf, a whole raft of, uh, a raft of common customers and very little conflicting product at the same time. So it was in many ways a, an ideal marriage, we just needed to get the courtship right to start off with. Um, it, it was an enormous uh, task to bring the Sysis mentality and the Sysis uh, route to market together with Dennis. They were on a direct basis, we were working through a dealership network. So there was lots and lots of stuff to do and a lot of effort was required in marketing uh, the product to get it up to the sort of Dennis standard that we had at that time. So uh, there was plenty to do. Did it work out well? I'm very pleased with the, the acquisition. I'm very pleased how it settled down. We've still got uh, almost 20 people from the original Sysis team working here at Derby and out on the road, which is... Uh, is, is great, there's a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge there that's carried on within our business. So. You seem to have gone to great lengths to actually keep those people within the business even though it's relocated now here in, in what was the Dennis headquarters. Um, what are some of the things that you did to make sure you kept that, that knowledge and that skill within, within the company? Well, SAS has been going since 1932, um, so there's an awful lot of product out there all over the world that there are people here within the organisation who know all about those products, how they worked, how to maintain them, what about spare parts and so on and so forth. So that knowledge is absolutely critical and it would take literally tens of years to accumulate that knowledge. Um, there's a team of people come down from Macclesfield every day, we provide a minibus and uh, another transport for people to come down and we'll continue to do that because they are an integral part of our team now. It's not a Sizes team and the Dennis team, it's the team that looks after both sides. So there's been a full integration there and, and those people have, have been travelling down for almost four years as you say. Well, looking around the business as I have been today, you wouldn't notice it was two businesses that are coming to mind other than you know, the way it's branded on, on the logo, the Dennis and the Sizes still having equal positioning. Your challenges as Managing Director over the next few years, it's obviously been for most businesses a tough few years of trading. I'm sure you know, you've had your challenges through that period. 
What do you think is going to be happening over the next few years? How do you see the market going and, and what are the, the issues that you're going to have to deal with? Well, since acquisition, we have grown the Dennis and Sizes business combined um, to the level it is now. We, uh, we enjoyed 8% growth last year. We're running at just shy of 8% growth this year. Um, a lot of that being export, so there's tremendous challenges to continue that growth because um, that's what we're here for at the end of the day. Um, a lot of potential overseas with markets in football and cricket and golf and all the other, the other sports as well. And also the synthetic side of things which is, a very, much, is very much an important part of, of what we do and where we're going to. A lot of product development, we've done a lot with our design team, we've done a massive amount to improve existing product. We've got lots of product that is no longer produced by Sciences, but we've got all the designs for, so there's a lot of stuff that we can do and will do. If there's a market out there for it, we'll work with customers to develop new products so that we can satisfy the marketplace both here in the UK, in Europe and the wider world of Japan, Korea, uh, South America, the USA, Canada and such like. So there's, there's a lot of challenges but it's a very, very exciting time for us and we're heading for, the, heading for the stars as a company. Now we've got the thing in place, we are aggressively looking to grow our business. If we can now move on to a little bit more about your business philosophy, if, if that's the right term. I think you're recognised as being obviously very patriotic, you put the Union Jack on all the mowers that, that come out of here. Um, how does that manifest itself and what does that actually mean to the business? We start, my grandfather started off our business in engineering and we've got engineering in the family bullet. I'm very, very pro-British as you say, very pro-manufacturing the components here in the UK with our facility next door, all British Precision and many other engineering businesses within the locality and the, the wider UK the added value to other businesses that's all important for the UK economy. We need manufacturing within the UK. Our company, as well as employing 40 people within Dennis and Sizes and 10 people within All British Precision, there are probably another 50 or 60 jobs in the wider UK marketplace that are reliant on Dennis and Sizes products. So it's very, very important that we support those. Um, I'm very, very patriotic to make sure it stays in the UK. I'm not looking to import stuff from overseas. Um, everything that we can make, we do make, and we need to keep good control on quality and delivery times, and we can only do that with UK sourced components. So to sum that up, British manufacturer allows you to keep control of the, the supply chain, the quality, and that to the end user means good, reliable machinery that if there is a problem, you can get a spare part quickly. Exactly. We need the, the customer buys our product to do a job. They don't buy it because they like the look of it. It's not an aesthetic item. Yep. It's a working tool. And if the tool doesn't work, the customer's not happy. We're there to make sure that it does. Well, Ian, thank you very much for your time. It's been a great insight into how things work here and a bit more about you. One final question before I go. Who looks after the grass at home and what do they use to cut it? I live on a farm. Got a lot of grass to look after. Sheep and sheep, goats and cattle to mow off most of the grass and I do also use a ride-on mower which is an Atesia uh, which I appreciate the quality of that product, it's a good quality product, uh, I've had a, a lot to do with Atesia mowers over the years and I respect the high quality that they make. Mine isn't a lawn that is suitable for a cylinder mower so hence I use that there. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay, good nice to see, to see you. you, thank you.